Am I on? Good morning. Oh, there we go. Thank you. I almost forgot to turn it on. 
You'd be really surprised about that. <laughs> Thank you. It is a beautiful day to be in worship, isn't it? Yes. And I welcome all of you who are worshiping with us in this space and all of you who are worshiping with us online this morning. And as most of you probably know, my name is Esther Rosario, and I'm the pastor here at Chesterton United Methodist Church. Um, for our online worshipers, we are celebrating Holy Communion today, so I'd like to invite you to hit pause and go to your kitchen and get some bread and crackers and juice so that later in worship you can receive Holy Communion with us. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Brother Bob Coleman and all the people who made worship run smoothly last week um, while, I, while we were away. Um, I, it is such a gift and a blessing to not to have to worry about what's happening here on a Sunday. It, it is truly a gift. And the wedding was beautiful, and my mom was able to go. My sister brought her out, and so five of her six children were present for the wedding. Uh, my oldest sister couldn't come because she had foot surgery a couple weeks ago and just couldn't travel yet. So, so it was really a, a joyful celebration. Um, happy Labor Day weekend. Yes. Um, during communion today, um, we will bring up symbols of our work. If, by chance, you did not bring a symbol of your work, it's okay because we have three by five cards that you can write down something that represents your work. So if you'd raise your hand, two things. If, if you need a three by five card and if you need the little half sheet of paper that has will the circle be unbroken and this little light of mine on it, if you did not get those, please raise your hands. Leslie's going to come and pass those out right now. So if you didn't get those, go ahead and raise your hands. If you need a three by five card to... And the reason we're doing this... Um, when we come forward for Holy Communion, we'll leave our symbols or the 3 by 5 card with something written on it that represents our work for the upcoming year. And this is symbolic of dedicating our upcoming year's work to the Lord. So that's, that's why we're doing that, if you'd like to participate. Um, the altar flowers are given by Patty Fry in honor of all workers on this Labor Day Sunday. And then you'll see we have two sets of flowers, right? Two beautiful bouquets up there. The other flowers are given by Don and Joanne Cundiff in celebration of their 34th wedding anniversary. So they are with us today up in the balcony. So which one of you has achieved sainthood? Joanne. <laughs> Joanne's raising her hand. <laughs> Um, as, as many of you uh, probably know, um, our friend and brother in Christ, Dan Johnston, uh, passed away. And his memorial service is this Friday, September 6th, right here in the sanctuary at 11 a.m. So um, just want to make you aware of that. Uh, please pray for Debbie Otto and Jody for healing. And please continue praying for Bob Welsh um, for continued healing. He is home now, which is, is wonderful, but please continue to pray for him and for, for Lynn as well. Um, okay, if you've been in worship with me before, you know that we are walking with our children and memorizing uh, scripture each month. And I'd, I'd like to just share something else um, along these lines. Not only are we memorizing the scripture each month with them, but um, beginning today, the sermons that I preach are using the same scripture that the children have in their Sunday school lessons. So I'm going off, off the lectionary, um, I don't always use the lectionary anyway, but, but while we are um, in this process of growing young and and connecting the generations. If we are hearing the same word as our children are, that will give us another way to start a conversation with them. So if you see one of our children, hey, you are the light of the world. What does that mean for you? So, so this is just another way to hopefully um, get, get us, let us grow closer together in our faith. All right. All right, let's, let's speak our memory verse together. 
Let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do, and they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. Would you, would you please stand and join me for the call to worship? God said, let there be light. And there was light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And the light shone in the darkness. Jesus said, you are the light of the world.
would you join me in the invocation? God of mystery, who has made us to be light in a shadowed world, guide us in this time of worship. Grant us understanding and spiritual discernment so that others may see your good works through us, give you the glory, and be moved to serve you in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated, or you may be seated. Okay, our scripture today comes from Psalm 18, 28. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. The word of God for the people of God. Today's gospel lesson is taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 5, beginning with verse 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So my best friend in high school was Connie Ziegler. And uh, we shared three very important things in common. The love of Jesus, the love of family, and the love of music. And we sang together in concert choir and swing choir in a sweet Adeline's quartet, which was a lot of fun. Uh, we sang duets, and whenever Connie sang solos, I was always her favorite accompanist. Um, and one day, Connie invited me to sing a duet with her in her church. Um, and of course I did. And the arrangement that we sang was by Evie, um, Hornquist. Now, Evie was popular back in the 1970s. She would occasionally sing uh, with the Billy Graham Crusades, okay, so just to give you some context. But anyway, Evie layered two songs together, which is why you were given that half sheet of Will the Circle Be Unbroken and, and This Little Light of Mine. And so I'd like to teach this to you. Um, and we're going to sing both songs to all together, and then we're splitting up. And one side will sing, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? And the other side will sing, This Little Light of Mine. So first we're going to practice, okay? Will the circle be unbroken in the sweet old by and by? There's a better day a coming in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Sing it again. Will the circle be unbroken? sweet old by and by there's a better day a coming in the sky lord in the sky let's do it again will the circle be unbroken in the sweet old by and by there's a better day a coming in the sky lord in this guy. Now let's sing this little light of mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, shine, shine. Let it shine. Sing it again. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, 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 let it shine. Okay, now this is what we're gonna do. 
This side is going to be, will the circle be unbroken? And this side is going to be this little light of mine. I'll bring you in. But we're going to sing all the way through, will the circle be unbroken one time? And you'll start the second time when I'll bring you in with this little light of mine. Okay, is it clear? This half, will the circle, this little light. All right? Now, keep going. Keep going. Thanks, Bill. I like that. Here we go. Will the circle be unbroken in the sweet old by and by? There's a better day a coming in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Keep it going. Will this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, 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 let it shine. Will the sun's little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, shine, shine. One more time, shine. Will the this little light of mine? I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. Again, in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, see, I, I talked to Bill before the 9 o'clock worship, and I said, I'm gonna need um, some support from you, and I meant vocally. I meant vocally, and, <laughs> and so, so when I got it to start, you know, to start teaching, he started playing. I said, time out. You don't know what key I'm singing in. And, and I said, you may not be playing in the key I want to sing in. And he said, okay, I'll listen to you first. And then he just, fought, he just jumped right in. So it was awesome. And it was, it, was, uh, it, was, it was great support. So I'm like, can you stay? And he said, yes. So anyway... Wasn't that fun? It was fun. And at the time that Connie and I sang this duet, I, I thought it was just a really fun song to sing. Um, but it wasn't until about 30 years later that I began to reflect on the genius behind juxtaposing those two songs together, which um, I'll share at the end of the message. Um, so let, let's pray. Uh, gracious um, and loving God, we thank you, God, for joy, for laughter, for singing, um, for how you um, call us into your presence through all of these things. Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit to be present in this place, to be thick in this place, moving in us and through us and around us, teaching us. The things that you would have us learn this day and encouraging our hearts to to live the way you're calling us to live and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be pleasing to you O Lord our rock and our Redeemer amen so Jesus only had three years to teach his disciples all they would need to know to spread the good news of the gospel. And it is within one of Jesus' greatest teaching moments, the Sermon on the Mount, um, that we find today's scripture lesson. And one day Jesus was teaching, preaching, and healing his way through Galilee, and great crowds from the region followed him, and, and Jesus went up on the mountainside and he sat down. And back in Jesus' day, Teachers would sit to signal they were going to begin teaching. And teach he did. Three chapters worth of teaching that teaches us how to live as faithful disciples of Jesus. And the Sermon on the Mount could be found in Matthews 5, 6, and 7 if you'd like to, to read through that this week. It is jam-packed. Jam-packed. So specifically, we learn from today's passage that we are to be the light of the world. Now, Jesus' disciples 
would have been familiar with the expression, light of the world. The image of light can be found throughout salvation history. The Israelites know God as light. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed that Israel is to be a light to the nations. God's word is light. Psalm 119, 105 reads, and we should know this, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Jesus himself is referred to in scripture as the light. The Gospel of Matthew makes the point of confirming at the onset of Jesus' ministry that Jesus was fulfilling what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah, and I quote, Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. And I could go on and on sharing different passages that use the imagery of light. But the point of all of that is that light is significant. In John's Gospel, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Our world needs the light of Christ. We don't have to look very far to see darkness in our world. All we have to do is turn on our TVs or tune into our favorite uh, streaming platforms, right? Uh, and what do we see? We see crime, we see terror, disease, politics, substance abuse, sex without boundaries, and on and on. Entertainment is dark. Modern politics, dark. Social media, dark. Now, okay, we see the cute puppy videos here and there. Or what I like to do on social media is just see pictures of my nieces and nephews and their children and, you know, and friends' pictures. And, you know, I love that about the, so social media. There are good aspects to these things, too. But there's darkness. There's so much meanness on social media, especially with the election looming, okay? And in all this darkness, we are the light. We are the light. It's not that we ought to be the light. We should be the light. Jesus said, you are the light. We are the light. And we are meant to shine the light of Christ by doing good works that glorify God in all that we do. Not just when we come to worship on Sunday mornings or go to Sunday school or Bible study or youth group or choir practice or band practice or any church-related activity. But in all that we do, wherever we are, we are the light. I hope we can hear that. So how are we to shine as if we are lights on a stand or a city on a hill? By doing good works. Hey, please understand, I do not buy into, nor will I preach, that we are saved by works, because we are not. We are saved by grace. We are saved by grace. Our good works are not to glorify ourselves. Our good works are to point to Jesus. Our good works are to draw attention to our loving Heavenly Father. We were made for this. Hear these words from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, beginning with verse 8. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are all called to be the light of the world, which is not our own light, but the light of Christ. We are called to do good works with humility, always pointing to Jesus. Good works do not have to be some 
super spectacular display. It could be something as simple as picking up litter when we see it, or pulling tin weeds when we, when we leave worship on Sundays. That's not written down. I did, that just came to my mind. Um, <laughs> um, it could be um, offering uh, a word of encouragement to a stranger. If you happen to notice someone that you don't know who looks pretty or, I mean, it may, maybe that might be weird. I don't know. But if you just, you look so nice today and you don't even know them, that might just you know, put a skip in their step. We don't know what will happen. Or open up a door for someone. Uh, being generous with our time, our talents, our resources, without a thought for what we will receive in return. Maybe it's sitting with a student in a lunchroom who always seems to be alone, even when that means not sitting with our friends that day. Being respectful and quiet when teachers are teaching. Um, you know, and I could just go on and on, but you get the idea. Simple things shine the light of Christ. We are to be the light of the world in our homes with our families, even when we don't feel like it, even when we don't feel like they deserve for us to be the light of Christ to them which we might feel on some days. But you know what? It's not about how we feel. It's about what we are called to do, what God calls us to do. We are to be the light in our workplaces, especially with coworkers who are difficult, or in our schools, or anywhere we go, we are the light. Jesus made a point of saying, people do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl or a bushel basket. It seems ridiculous to think that someone would um, light, light a light and then put it under something to hide it. Like, for example, let's think about if you've ever been at home at night and the electricity goes off and, and it's pitch black, first thing we do is find a flashlight or some kind of lantern or light a candle or something. How ridiculous would it be just to immediately cover it up? I mean, it would render it ineffective, useless, pointless, right? So something for us to consider this week, a couple of things. One, are we being the light? Or are we hiding the light with a metaphorical bushel basket? What might our personal bushel baskets be? And I'm just going to tell you straight up, I cannot and I will not answer that question for any one of you. I can only answer that for myself, and all y'all can only answer that for yourselves, right? But here are some examples of what a bushel basket might be in our personal lives. One is not being willing to be uncomfortable, not being willing to do something different that we're not used to. Another thing is when we put what we want above what God is asking of us. Or not being willing to inconvenience our schedules. These are just a few thoughts. I mean, there are many more. And like I said, we each have to discern that for our own lives. But what about the metaphorical bushel baskets that we put over our church? One might be that we get stuck in the past, back in the good old days when our church, blah, 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 blah. And, and all y'all can fill in that blank way better than I can. I don't have a long enough history here yet to, uh, to do that. Or maybe hearing people say, well, we've always done it this way, being unwilling to change for the sake of the gospel or being unwilling to change the way a ministry is run because it will open us up to more than just the core group that's always been together. You know, we get close to each other when we're in small groups, and that's a wonderful thing. It, it truly is a wonderful thing. But it's not so wonderful when our small group becomes a clicky or clubbish. 
It's wonderful when we share with others, especially when we share with those who do not know Jesus. And I can't speak for anyone else, but I know that for myself, it is so easy to run in crowds of people who believe like I do and think like I do. And not so easy to step out of that and become f actual friends with someone who is, let's say, an atheist, for example. But aren't we to be shining the light? I mean, if we just shine the light to each other, it's not going to reach the people that we're meant to reach. I mean, we need to do that for each other, right, to be encouraging. But we also need to get out of our usual circles so that we can befriend people who believe differently than we do and love them, honestly love them, and not try to come across as, well, I know better than you, but just to share that love because they won't feel love if they think we're coming across as being arrogant and knowing better, okay? So our invitation this week is to name our personal bushel baskets and reflect on those in our church's bushel baskets. Name them. Repent of them. And choose to live as the light of the world. The light is meant to be shared. Remember the songs we sang at the beginning of the message? Of course you do. Will the circle be unbroken and this little light of mine? So the genius behind the juxtaposition of these songs is the idea of shining Jesus' light so that the circle will not be broken. Jesus shared the light with his disciples so that they too could share the light from believers to unbelievers, from one generation to the next, and the next, and the next. And we are gathered in this place as the body of Christ because those before us said yes when Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Thanks be to God. As Eugene Peterson puts it in the message translation of Matthew 5, verses 15 and 16, keep open house, be generous with your lives by opening up to others you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. May our lives shine bright in this dark and hurting world. Amen. I'd like to invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 12, or you may just follow along on the screen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, 
who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment to offer up our silent prayers of confession. Please take a moment to wrap up your prayers. Please look up here. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love by passing the peace of Christ. This Wednesday is the choir kickoff potluck. So, so I just heard, didn't you hear, Ruth, all these amazing singers out here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just proved it. We had a very short rehearsal, and we pulled it off. So um, 6.30 in Terry Ryan Hall, bring a dish to share and um, have the first rehearsal. I'm sure that the choir would love to have more people join, so yeah. If you feel called to that, please do it. Okay, next Sunday uh, is a membership class at noon, and it may not last until two, but it might. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to say. I just put that on there so we'd have enough time. But if you've been dating us for a while and haven't uh, become a member of the church and would like to learn more, just coming to the class doesn't mean you're obligated to join. But just come and learn more about the ministries of. Uh, our church, and also what it means to be a member of the church. I invite you to come. Please let Joanne know in the church office by Wednesday so that we can have enough food um, for the lunch, because you will get lunch too. And if some members would like to come and just hang out, that'd be okay too, but just let Joanne know so we have, we have the food we need. Okay. Um, we're continuing our time of worship now by the giving of our tithes and offerings. And... Um, you know, shining the light of Christ uh, in all aspects of our lives includes how we give. So we just ask that give generously as the Lord asks you to give. Because in this place, this is where we equip and train disciples to shine the light of Christ wherever we happen to be. So thank you. Thank you, ushers, for serving us this morning.
Almighty God, all that we have comes from you. Please accept these tithes, offerings, and gifts and multiply them for your use, that the light of Christ may shine brightly in our homes, in our churches, our schools, our workplaces, our communities, our nation, and our world, all for the glory of your Son in whose name we pray. Amen. I ask that you please remain standing as you are able. If you'd like to turn to page 17 and follow along, you may or you may follow along on the screen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You may be seated. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We praise you for all who labor for the common good and for those whose service is unappreciated. We thank you for children whose play is the work of learning to live in the world. We thank you for disciples who are obedient to the promptings of your spirit in all their relationships. We thank you for your yearning mercy that waits for us to make all our hours and days participation in your healing and blessing of the earth and all peoples. You made us in your image and set us in a lush garden as caretakers. When we chose to have it all to ourselves, you turned our freedom to the toil for survival. When we cried out in our misery, you delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. By the prophets, you called us to return to you and delight in good food without price. You confronted us with the waste of laboring apart from you, and you asked us, why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and for labor that does not satisfy, incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, anointed with your Spirit. His food was to do your will and to complete it. He took the common things of daily life, blessed them, and broke and shared them so that all were satisfied. He told those who followed him, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. He confronted the powers of greed and evil at the cost of his life, but you triumphed over death and placed him at your right hand to intercede for his disciples until the feast of eternal life. By water and the Spirit, he calls us to continue his work until we and all peoples feast at his heavenly banquet. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves to live daily as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour 
out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on those who are worshiping with us online and on these gifts of bread and wine and on the gifts of bread and wine in our homes. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now with the confidence of being the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The table is set in the United Methodist Church. Come on, come on down. In the United Methodist Church, um, all are welcome at the table. All we need to do is repent of our sin, believe in Jesus, and seek to live in peace with one another. So we invite you to come with palms up because the sacrament is a gift to be received. It's not something that we can just take for ourselves. It is a gift freely given by our Savior. Won't you come? Your work with you.
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So friends, the invitation is before us. What is the invitation? Shine our light. Okay. So before we get to the next part of the invitation, I was thinking that, okay, so we are to shine our light because Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And Jesus was the true light of the world, right? We're sharing that light. But we cannot share the light of Jesus with others if we don't spend time with Jesus. We can't give and share to others what we ourselves do not have. So I'd like for us to be invited to remember, oh, the fan is blowing this out. There we go, stay. To remember every day to go to the source of the true light so that we might be filled with the light of Christ so that we can share that with others. Okay, so there was another part. Are we, to ask ourselves, are we shining the light? Or are we covering the light with a bushel basket? And to reflect on what are our personal bushel baskets and what 
bushel baskets might our church have that makes us ineffective in this world? Some things to think about. But be encouraged, my friends. You are the light of the world. And may the blessing of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us this day and remain with us forever. And all God's children say, Amen.